Mr. Harmon and I go back a very long way. We have always had very friendly relationship. Uh, when when uh, this impasse, this unfortunate political impasse arose, um, I was quite shocked at the behavior of Harmon and the utterances which emanated from Harmon. And nothing changed after uh, the results were declared. Harmon demonstrated during that five month period his utter contempt for the rule of law, for our constitution, for the will of the people and for the tenets of democracy. He shamelessly trampled upon those concepts. And after the results were declared, one would have thought that you know he would have adjusted his behavior. Lo and behold, the new government is sworn in and Harmon conduct, Harmon's conduct, Harmon's writings, Harmon's utterances continue to be irrational, completely irrational. For her, a person of Harmon's stature, the general secretary of APNU, A, APNU and the virtual deputy head of the presidential secretariat to think that he can continue employment under a PPP administration is a manifestation of mental disequilibrium of the highest proportion. You cannot be a rational mind to think as Harmon thought that we would sit down with him, as he said in the press, and negotiate a collaboration whereby he seemed to think that he can continue to function in the office of the president. And that is why I said in my response to him that having regard to the antics which he displayed during that five months period and the utterances that he made during that period and having regard to the content of his letter and what he said in the press, it is clear that reason has not yet resumed its natural seat because reason departed him during those five months period. And I thought that there would have been some cooling time through which or by which reason would have returned. But he's obviously not a master of his own mind, even up to now. And that is what that letter sought to portray. Um, sinecure appointments, political appointments, well, sinecure appointments are immoral, if not unlawful. AG, political before, appointments. But AG, have no, yeah, sorry. Before you go on to the sinecure appointments and the political appointments, uh, which is we want to hear some more just to uh zero in on the harmon uh matter a little bit more sir if harmon is claiming that there is a fraudulent government in process whatever convolutions it is his letter states that he does not recognize the government because it is fraudulent and uh, as a lawyer sir can you help us understand what does he recognize then because harmon is not um, granger is not the president so what would be with Ms. Harmon say he's recognizing? Harmon, first of all, you, Harmon, Joseph Harmon, accusing or describing this government as fraudulent is akin to a prostitute proclaiming virginity at a brothel. That's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is that Harmon describes the government as fraudulent, but at the same time is offended that the government is not inviting him to continue to work with the government because he wants to be part of the government. And that is what he says. Right. So that's the second point. Then the third point, Though he accuses the government of being fraudulent, 
he demands contractual benefits from the very fraudulent government. And when one takes all of that into account, one is obliged to conclude that you're not dealing with a man whose faculties are fully in place. Right. Harman doesn't recognize my authority according to him. My authority is derived from the constitution. I am the legal advisor of the government of Guyana. It is the government of Guyana that he is seeking to engage, that he claims is fraudulent. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he doesn't, I am not surprised firstly that he doesn't recognize my authority because my authority is derived from the constitution, a document that he is demonstrably unfamiliar with. Yeah. And that was made clear during the whole election saga. In fact, him and his entire administration are absolutely unfamiliar with that document. Hence their actions. So I'm, not, I'm not surprised that he doesn't recognize my authority. But, but AG, who, look, I mean, the truth is for, the, for, for all our brothers and sisters out there, if the, the gentleman has, we heard, applied for leave, um, it is you who would have to address uh, whether that leave is due based on his contracts, isn't it? Exactly. And then, but can a fraudulent government grant him leave? Can a fraudulent government pay him his contractual benefits? Mm -hmm. When you engage with a fraudulent agency, the transaction itself becomes infected with the very fraud that you are alleging. Mm -hmm. And it's all those reasons that I said what I said. Also importantly, is that um, Harman, you know, the, the, the mere fact that this guy thinks that he can continue to work is mm -hmm. utterly bizarre. Continue in, in, in employment. And you know, what he also does not appreciate is that his own president terminated his contract. He relies right. upon a contract and the contract, if you go back to the contemporaneous clippings in the news, the president he, the presidential, the, sec, the secretary to the office of the president or the ministry of the presidency is the one who signs the contract, signed the contract. The president appointed him director general and the president disappointed him when he, and the president made that very clear that Mr. Harmon is being removed from the position of director general and is appointed head of the task force. Let him produce the contract that he has for the task force. That is the extent contract under which he was operating. And that is the contract for which he must get benefits. He, if he wants, he's supposed to have settled his contractual entitlements with President Granger at the time when President Granger removed him from that contract or from that contractual office. As I pointed out, the office is not constitutional. The office is not statutory. It's not created by any legislation. The office is therefore contractual, created through political expediency. So at the time when he was removed from that office, the office didn't exist any longer. The office went with him. The office was created for him. And when he was removed from the office, the office went with him. So there is no office of director general anywhere in the public sector of this country other than director general of foreign affairs ministry, which was a position, maybe they have it in a permanent establishment, but there's no director general in the ministry of the presidency. So when Mr. Granger removed him from that position, Granger terminated his contract and he did not object. He went, he complied with the transfer or secondment or whatever it is that you want to call it to his new appointment without objection. And that is why I intimated in the letter that the contract would have been mutually terminated because 
the, the, the contractor and the contractee by their conduct terminated the contract and apparently created a new post, head of the task force, for which Harmon is not claiming any entitlement and I, I can't find a contract because there was none. So he obviously was operating on a month-to-month -month oral contract in that capacity. And a, a, a rational lawyer would have been able to re, uh, understand all these concepts that I'm explaining because they are elementary contractual principles. 